Hi there, welcome to my views and news. Three new stories. First one from Somalia, second one from Sudan. Last new story is from Ethiopia. Uh, Somalia's president delivered another speech last night, uh, lashing out at Ethiopia and maybe Kenya too. Uh, though he was addressing uh, a ceremony uh, about a soccer event, but even there he did not forget uh, to criticize Ethiopia. What did he say? Secondly, Sudan arrests of a top uh, military officials. Uh, a coup attempt reportedly was in the making, foiled by security forces. Thirdly, Yamabe is responding to questions at parliament. Uh, uh, session ongoing. I have received a few details about what he is saying at the uh, parliament. He talked about proliferation of media, money, and geopolitical dynamics as the reasons behind uh, security and peace related issues in Ethiopia. Firstly, viewers, uh, Hassan Sheikh, Somalia's president, wherever he goes, whenever he speaks, he uh, does not forget to slam Ethiopia, to criticize Ethiopia. He is continuing with this narrative uh, against Ethiopia that Ethiopia wants to annex Somali territories. Since the day uh, Ethiopia and Somali land signed the MOU, Somalia has been taking a uniform position. Somalia's position is that Ethiopia wants to annex Somali territories. And uh, Hassan Sheikh on more than one occasion uh, talked about uh, past grievances that in the past Ethiopia annexed Somalia territories. Again, last night when he spoke, he reiterated this position of Somalia's government. Hassan Sheikh was addressing a prize distribution ceremony uh, of a soccer event. Uh, two days ago in Mogadishu, regional soccer tournament matches were played. And I think last night, prize distribution ceremony was held there. Hassan Jay was there and there he spoke. So it was a sports-related gathering, but even there he raised a political issue. Uh, a foreign policy related issue. What did he say? He said, uh, if you don't uh, want us, we don't want you as well. Obviously, he was talking about Ethiopia. Then he mentioned past grievances that you annexed our territories in the past. I think he was referring to both Ethiopia and Kenya, according to Somalia. Ethiopia annexed uh, Somalia's territories and the Somali region of Ethiopia is part of Somalia and uh, the and Kenya allegedly uh, annexed Northern Frontier District, NFD, which uh, Somalia says was illegally annexed by Kenya. So Hassan Sheikh, though the target of his talk was mainly Ethiopia, but obviously uh, he was implying that uh, other countries annexed Somali territories in the past and uh, remaining territories uh, are now their target. They want to annex Somalia's remaining territories. This is a very dangerous narrative, by the way. Uh, yes, Hassan Sheikh is getting public support. People are rallying. Uh, people are supporting Hassan Sheikh's this narrative. But uh, for people to people contact, it's a very dangerous narrative. That is why maybe we are seeing that uh, Ethiopians in Somalia are becoming vulnerable to attacks. They are unsafe. And uh, last night, Sarah reported about an attack on a family in uh, Jubaland, Beladehavao, an Ethiopian family. Six or seven were killed, or Romo Ethiopians. So these uh, leaders should be careful. Yes, uh, their words matter, by the way. What they say matters. Somalia might be correct in citing historical grievances, but uh, the leaders should ensure that what they say does not lead to ethnic violence. While they have every right to take positions uh, to put pressure upon the other side, 
they should also be careful that uh, their talk their uh, words don't lead to ethnic violence secondly viewers uh, it seems that a coup was in the making in sudan some top security officials have been arrested details have not been made public in umedrman these arrests have been made of some top sudanese military officials according to some sources uh, sudanese intelligence agency received information about a likely coup attempt that is why it took action sudanese military led by burhan general burhan is under immense pressure military is losing ground to rapid support forces rsf gradually sweeping across a sudan military losing ground it, it it has launched a counter offensive by the way for the last few days we have been seeing renewed fighting in umedrman in parts of khartoum in al jazeera state military wants to retake its lost territories but military under immense pressure because military is working in alliance with tribal leaders with uh, some regional leaders military so far has been unable uh, to push back uh, rapid support forces that is why maybe there was a coup uh, coup attempt by the way some ukrainian news sources are reporting that wagner fighters have been arrested in sudan that they were planning a coup i don't know about the arrests of wagner fighters uh, but arrests of some sudanese uh, top security officials uh, has been confirmed uh, maybe uh, military top military uh, officers uh, wanted to remove al burhan uh, details not made public so far lastly viewers uh, ethiopian uh, prime minister is responding to questions from mps at the parliament uh, those who are known for asking tough questions are behind the bars the man today attributed economic uh, problems uh, and other challenges faced by ethiopia to uh, others not to government he shared details of government's performance that government has done a lot in the amhara region government is working on uh, more than 53 infrastructure projects uh, 1 103 1 1000 1000 uh, uh, kilometer roads uh, have been constructed in amhara region and uh, several projects have been completed abe river innovation work on lali vela church is gurugram project etc uh, but government has not been able to respond to macro economic challenges because uh, uh, there are uh, conflicts internal uh, conflicts and external pressure that is why government could not make uh, big decisions to uh, meet macro economic challenges so abi's government is acknowledging that internal conflicts are leading to economic problems that is what everyone knows by the way it's not uh, difficult to understand that as long as there are conflicts internal conflicts in ethiopia there cannot be long term uh, lasting prosperity external pressure this point is interesting which external pressure is being faced by ethiopia i think maybe he was saying that ethiopia was not getting uh financial support pressure is there uh, imf world bank in talks with ethiopia for months uh, but no bailout package they want ethiopia to lift state of emergency they want ethiopia to improve human rights record ethiopia removed from argo as well so external pressure is there but even this external pressure is linked to what is happening in ethiopia it's linked to internal conflicts secondly the man claimed that uh, proliferation of media money and geopolitical dynamics are leading to peace and security issues in ethiopia uh here i am unable to understand i mean uh, which media uh, outlets are so powerful in ethiopia that they are creating 
security and uh, law and order issues. Yes, they are reporting about it and they are biased. Uh, they spread rumors to, they spread wrong information to. But to say that they are the ones which are responsible for crises and conflicts in the region, in the country, it's an exaggeration. Government's decisions led to start of conflicts. Government decided to disband Fano fighters, Fano groups. It decided to disband Amhara special forces. That is how conflict in the Amhara region started. There was no media back then. Uh, fanning the conflict, fueling the conflict in the Amhara region. All media outlets uh, then started reporting. Amharic news outlets, they started reporting, criticizing the government. And now government says that it's media. No, it's not media. Government's decisions led to start of conflicts in Ethiopia. Government now should admit that its wrong decisions led to start of or its wrong decisions were the reasons behind start of conflicts in Ethiopia. And he said that uh, his target is that uh, debt to GDP ratio should be 10%, uh, but now it's at 17%. So he acknowledged economic challenges, but uh, he claimed that government is on the right track. My understanding, my analysis is that government is not on the right track. I've been saying that, that uh, there cannot be any big economic turnover in Ethiopia, no big uh, economic change expected because government's direction is not right. Uh, governments, and by the way, he mentioned three points. He said the government's three objectives are law enforcement negotiations with adversities and uh, job creation. Here, if you analyze government's performance according to these three criteria mentioned by the Prime Minister, has government created any uh, job opportunities for youth except in the security sector? Government failed. No job creation. Talks with adversities. Here too, government policy is uh, uh, not uniform. Government is talking to Ola, but not ready to talk to Pano groups. Law enforcement. Yes, law enforcement is the priority of the government, but uh, we're seeing that uh, through this law enforcement, uh, government is uh, spending too much on military and law enforcement institutions. The government does not have money to spend on youths, to spend on its human resources, to uh, improve the capabilities of its people. Uh, government does not have money for that because it is focused on security. That is what I have been saying for uh, months, by the way. And then government is focused on building big projects, which can be shown by the government to those who visit Ethiopia. But basically, no spending on human resource, no spending on job creation, uh, no spending, no major spending on uh, those uh, departments which could be game changer for the youths. Only security sector is open for them. Fano Fight is ready to give them uh, monthly pays, Ola fighters as well, government forces. That is what so far is happening. I'll update you in coming videos about PM Abhi's uh, talk uh, while I'm recording this video. He's still responding to questions. Thank you for watching.